Hi everyone! Today I am finally going to fill up this palette with my gouache. I'm so excited I've been putting this off for a while and I really want to get into it today. I've showed you this little one that I have which is my existing gouache palette and it has these top row of colours in them. It's pretty messy, it's not very big and I've been wanting to expand into a larger one with more mixing space. I've also got some new tubes that I haven't even tested out yet, so I'm going to put everything into this big palette today. Okay, so this is a Derivan folding palette. I have seen this palette under any number of different brand names. It's a fairly basic one. I think Meaden does one as well. If I find it, I will link it in the description below. I think I've seen it on Amazon. So this one, this one has the lift out tray and it has 33 wells here. So I've managed to keep my gouache in here, although you can see that it does crack a bit. So what I am going to do, and I did with these ones, is mix in a little bit of glycerine because I find that that helps reduce the cracking. The white one especially cracks a lot. I think the first time I had the white in here it cracked so much that the whole thing fell out. So yes, I learned from experience that adding glycerine to these gouache tubes in particular. I don't really know about other brands but the Art Spectrum ones do get quite crumbly. The addition of the glycerine really does make a difference. Here it is. I just got this in my local supermarket. It should be fairly common to find and it works perfectly well. It says application for roughened skin so I mean it's got quite a lot of purposes and is a useful thing to have in your house and it's also great to mix into watercolour paints and into gouache. And I have my little case of gouache brushes which I haven't used yet so I will be using those today when I get around to painting. I will also swatch the colours as well just to make sure I have them in the right order before I put them in and commit to the palette. Okay, I did a tiny swatch just to see what my new colours look like and where they will fit in with the old colours and I've got some serious problems going on here. A couple of the tubes have just gone everywhere so I am going to have to get these in right away and then I will re-swatch everything and talk about the paints a bit more but yes help me <laughs> that's always the phthalo blue and I've also got a dark green and a turquoise which have just gone everywhere these three behave themselves very well I may actually try to transfer these into there because I'll just quickly show you the Art Spectrum gouache paints do re-wet extremely well with no issues whatsoever. And you can see they are just as good dry as they are wet. I know that gouache is probably meant to be used wet but I tend to always squeeze too much out and so then it dries anyway and I really don't like to waste it so I thought I would just have it in a palette and I can always add wet gouache on top of the dry gouache if I need to. But okay this blue has kind of split and you can see how really easily that is going to spill all over my desk and that is not going to come out because phthalo blue is the worst staining color of all of them. All right what I'm going to do is I think there are a few other colors I might want to add so I'm going to leave a few spaces for example there is one called poster red that I think I really want to get because these two are quite cool and this one is very orange so I think I'm going to get the poster red which I think is a bit more in that fire engine red color. I think I'm going to probably get the light green at some point and I might get an ultramarine so I'm just going to split them up because I've got plenty of room and I can always add colors later on. I'll do the messy ones first because as you can see it's gone everywhere so I'm kind of committed to those. I have somehow managed to get turquoise on the floor and I've stood in it and I've walked it through my studio. Oh, I'm doing well today. All right first thing I'm going to do is clean this up and then I will get to putting them into the palette. Okay thankfully it came off the floor but it has stained my foot a bit. Oh well I guess I'll be having a long shower later today just as well I was in bare feet and didn't get that all over the soles of my shoes and I also managed to not walk it on the carpet only just on the lino around this area so phew <laughs> I am incapable of pouring neat pans apparently because that is all over the side joy I think I'll leave that one empty <laughs> for now I've just got the green one here which I need to sort out and then I can hopefully pour the rest without them going everywhere. Phew, 
I'm slightly more under control now. So what I think I'm going to do is just try and take these ones out and stick them in there and then I'll add some fresh paint over the top. I've managed to dig all the old paint out. I don't know if it's a very good idea putting it in here, but I don't want to use this palette anymore and I don't want to waste the paint, so I'm just going to put it in and mix fresh stuff in with it and hopefully it won't be a total disaster. turned out to be far more complicated than it needed to be. I apologize if you came here under false pretenses expecting to see one of those wonderful videos where people pour out their paints and it all looks so beautiful because that's not going to happen here. I am apparently incapable of doing that. But if you do want to see some lovely paint pouring, I highly recommend going to visit Irene at Inkworks. On her channel, she does some amazing paint pouring and everything just looks so beautiful. I've linked her channel in the description below. Do check that out if that's the kind of video that you're after. <laughs> Mine's just a bit more of a mess. <laughs> I also drew out a bit of a swatch card. This is just a temporary one because I very cleverly only counted 10 squares and not 11 squares so I've got 10 and a half here and I've got my white hidden down there but I figured it's not such a big deal because I haven't got anything in these two and I am going to probably end up with a few more paints but obviously these do not move around so now that they're in here I'm going to have to just add paints to the open spaces and hope that they stay in some kind of order. I also worked out that this does come out if I can get it to pull out yes look it does I thought it did for some reason I couldn't pull it out earlier but <laughs> there we go so I'm just going to swatch these paints out and we'll just take a quick look at what they are like so as we see here the primary red is actually a very pink magenta which I suppose is technically the primary one and the crimson is a much deeper red I think the poster red would be brighter again so I will add that here is Flesh, which I think Art Spectrum is actually changing the name over to Dusky Rose because it's a bit silly. So many people do not have Flesh that colour. It's a ridiculous name, so I'm glad they're changing that one. Orange and Yellow are both very bright and surprisingly transparent, as is the middle green here, which really kind of looks like a light green, and the dark green I would consider more just a regular phthalo green, so I would like to have a green that's darker than that dark green. I love the turquoise, it looks very much like a cobalt teal. Now the primary blue and the phthalo blue ended up looking very similar, which is why I ended up scooping the primary blue out and moving it right next to the phthalo blue. I don't know why I got the phthalo blue, honestly the primary on its own would have been just fine, but for some reason I got it into my head I wanted phthalo blue as well. The Prussian blue is much darker again, and that violet is a nice dioxazine purple. 
I've only got one brown at the moment, the raw umber. I would like to get a burnt umber and, and maybe a burnt sienna too. The black is wonderfully dark and the white is really opaque. Alright, so here's my swatch card. You can see that some of them, like the primary red, are very transparent and others, like the violet and the raw umber, the flesh, the turquoise a little bit, the black and the white, are very opaque. So it's a nice set. I think the colours are really bright and pretty. I definitely want to add things over time, but I think this is a pretty decent base set for now. And obviously it is frugal February, so I am not buying anything else <laughs> this month. <laughs> So I will make do with these colors. I really like the white. I think this is a really good one and it is nice and opaque as you can see. It usually takes a couple of layers to really cover something like that. Even in one layer that is pretty good. It's a few days later and the paints have dried. Some of them into a lovely cracked glaze despite the addition of the glycerine. Never mind, they will re-wet. They are still a little bit tacky and that violet, I just put my finger in it, is still a bit sticky but they should be fine to work with. So I'm going to do a painting with them. I was trying to think of what to do and I have just been out to my father's. I took a little bit of footage, which you can see here. I decided I'd take a little photo of one of the pretty views, just looking over some of the township and I am going to paint that today. So let me get into it. So I took a photo of that scene overlooking the town of Clunes and I am just basically painting a light layer over the whole thing, getting in some of the trees and it's very impressionistic, it's not meant to be super realistic. I was using the paints a bit like I would with watercolour to be perfectly honest. Gouache paints are meant to be much more opaque and you can paint over them so they kind of function more like an acrylic paint but they have the benefits of a watercolour paint in that they will re-wet once they've dried and so of course because I use watercolours all the time it took me quite a while to get the hang of switching over my mindset to using gouache so for a start I really am using these gouache paints very diluted and I'm just painting the surrounding greenery first and then I went in with the buildings which turned out of course to be very complicated and it took me quite a long time. I don't know if you just saw me use my scissors there. There was one tiny hair sticking out and it was driving me crazy so I ended up snipping that. There were a couple of brushes in this gouache set that did require a little bit of a haircut just because certain bristles would poke out and drive me insane because they then drag the paint and ruin the nice neat line. But what I did was I started off very lightly just trying to get the roofs and all of the different parts of the buildings in. The buildings themselves are quite light so I was trying to work off the photograph but it turned out that it was just very difficult to kind of see the definition so I did end up adding a lot more shadow into them to just make them stand out. So that's what I did. I eventually got the hang of it and started using thicker layers of gouache on top of this really thin layer, but I usually like to start with an underpainting anyway. It's just how I worked. So I'll let you see how this painting turned out and I'll talk again once I've finished it.
go and my gouache palette was never clean again. <laughs> the state of it. Oh well, I like it when palettes are used and have paint all over them. It makes me feel like I've actually accomplished something. So I had a good time with this. I did of course pick a very complicated design. These buildings were really hard, but I think it came out okay and it looks mostly like the picture if a bit wobbly in places, but I like the greenery. I think that turned out really well and I really like that tree in the distance and I quite like this one as well. So, you know, it wasn't a total disaster and I think it's nice and colorful, a bit of practice and I might have to try and do some more building scenes in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was somewhat helpful. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget Forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button and I will see you all again in my next video which will be really soon. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Swatch you later. Bye!